So today I'm uh, be talking about the bioconductor, two bioconductor packages. One is called RCWL, and the other is RCWL pipelines. So this com um, combines to be a tool chain for usage and development of reproducible bioinformatics pipelines in CWL. So uh, there are common challenges for bioinformatics. Uh, it is the reproducibility. So either that you want to reproduce your own pipeline after a period of time, or you want to reproduce um, some pipelines developed by your collaborators, or if you want to reproduce um, a new method that has just been published, people have tried to um, quantify the hours you need to put into uh, to successfully reproduce um, a new method. So they have estimated 280 hours for a noise with minimal bioinformatics um, expertise. So if you are a skilled bioinformatician, you may just cut this half, but still like there's a lot of time to successfully reproduce a new method. So there are many aspects are involved for the reproducibility first. And uh, a, common, uh, a common, a typical uh, bioinformatics pipelines always comes with uh, complex dependency trees and system configuration requirements. So you need specific and stable versions of a certain software for a specific analysis. And I input and output connections between steps can be very time consuming, especially if you are manually monitoring your pipeline step by step. So we need standardized description language to connect the steps with input and output. And also people are using different computing uh, environments. Some are using the lo uh, their local computer uh, with different operating systems. Some works on the high performance computing uh, with different job submitting systems. And uh, if the data gets really large, uh, people use the cloud to do um, their data analysis. So, uh, with all these challenges, we do need a portable and stable tools, reproducible pipelines across execution environments. Workflow languages represent a um, solution for these challenges. There are many popular workflow platforms such as the SnakeMake, a Python workflow manager, uh, the workflow description language from Broad Institute and NextFlow and common workflow language. So today we'll be focusing on the common workflow language. Uh, it is an open standard for describing analysis workflows and tools in a way that makes them portable and scalable across a variety of software and hardware environments from workstations to cluster, cloud and high performance computing environments. Uh, it has been very, uh, widely used in data intensive science, such as bioinformatics, medical imaging, machine learning, external and on platforms such as Galaxy and Cromwell. So the reason we choose common workflow language today is that we have seen the mostly, uh, the most number of pipelines that are publicly available on the Docker Hub. So there are also many public available uh, pipelines in the other format, but we see the most uh, are written by the common workflow language. Um, now we are having the inter, our, we are developing our interface for common workflow language, but in the future plan, we do um, want to um, design a universe inter, our interface for all the other, like not all for most of the other popular um, workflow platforms such as the Snake Make Widow and NextFlow is on our next step. So there are so many advantages of using workflow languages in your own uh, data analysis. However, it poses um, like again many challenges for implementing them in your own research. First, the workflow languages have a very steep learning curve. So it requires an expertise that is far beyond the expertise uh, from wet, um, wet life bench scientist and even for skilled data analyst. And also, as we know, the workflow language systems are always mostly focusing on the upstream data pre-processing steps 
which usually involve those command line tools. Uh, but for most of the downstream data analysis, especially those statistical data analysis, uh, they heavily rely on the RM bioconductor packages. Uh, the workflow language is now lacks connection to the RM bioconductor. And again, it lacks interoperability with the existing R packages, R functions, and pipelines. So we and uh, from all the most of the available public available pipelines we have seen, uh, I think most of them need more modularization for easy sharing and reusing, especially for those overlapping steps in different data analysis. So here we have um, developed our package called our CWL. It is an R interface to CWL. Uh, so it provides functionalities to standardize the development of CWL pipelines within R and Bioconductor. So it flattens the learning curve of writing a common workflow language. You just uh, stay in your familiar R um, workspace and use all the um, grammar of R to write a CWL pipelines. The second in, enables the best practices and standardize the data flow between steps. Also, it promotes the modularization of tools for easier sharing of established pipelines or critical steps. So it provides three categories of main functions. Uh, first is the composition. We can use the function CWL prime and CWL step prime to construct your CWL tools and CWL pipelines in, within R. For execution, uh, we can use these functions to conveniently execute your predefined tools or pipelines in your local computer, uh, on the high performance computing, or in the shiny interface. We have also provided a visualization function called Cloud CWL so that you can easily share uh, your workflow with your collaborator. So here it shows a simplified single cell RNA sequencing pre-processing step. And uh, this, green, uh, uh, this green blocks are the tools that will be involved. Here are the two input files, FASTQ and the reference genome, and some output files for the whole pipeline. A typical um, bioinformatics workflow usually includes some command line tools in the, for the pre-processing. Here we use the fast QC for QC and star solo for read alignment. And also for the downstream data analysis, many R and pack contactor packages will be included. For example, the droplet utils here, which will be do some um, early uh, filtering of the empty droplets. So sometimes like more QC steps will be included, but we'll be using this uh, simplified pipeline to show you the usage of RCWL. So it um, mainly comes with three steps. First, you need to build the CWL tools for yourself or using the existing uh, our pre-built uh, tools uh, we introduce a little bit later. So this is only for developers if you want to uh, develop your own tool, uh, your customized uh, tool sites. So basically we need to use the CWI prime function to define uh, S4 class. Here it is called star solo. So it comes with uh, like you have to define the base command because it is represents a command line tool. So if you are using it in the command line, you need to call the star. This is the base command and you need to put the input primes and output primes to uh, combine to uh, a to define it as an S4 class, as an CWL2 in R. So for the input primes, here we define two of them. The first is the FASTQ file. The second is the reference genome. We need to specify the type of the file. Is it a file or directory? And the prefixes if you're using it in the command line. And the output file, here we are interested in two files. One is the BAM file. Uh, generated from star solo and the solo directory generated from star solo, which will be passed into the next step of droplet utils. So uh, now we have the star solo defined, it's ready to use in R, and let's pretend the droplet utils is also defined uh, similarly. 
The second step is to connect your tools into your pipeline. Now we have two tools. One is the Star Solo, one is the Droplet U tools. How do we connect them into a pip pipeline? So the basic command is called CWL step prime. So it is this function is to initiate a pipeline called SCPIP. Uh, if you need to put the input and output, the input will be the input for the whole pipeline. So we have two input files. The output will be the output for the whole pipeline, not a single, not from a single um, tool, but the whole pipeline. So we are interested in three files. One is the SAM file from Star Solo, and the solo folder from Star Solo, and the SCE, which is a single cell experiment R object. Uh, from generated from droplet utils. Now we define the two steps. The first step is to call, so the run equals to star solo. This is the R object we have defined in step one here, and uh, the input files for this step. And the second step two is the going to run the droplet utils. Presumably, we have uh, generated from step one and. Uh, uh, so just pay attention here because the input uh, file for the droplet utils it is actually reading the up, output file from Star Solo. So these steps connect the two tools with the input and the output. So next is uh, as simple as just using the plus sign to connect the initiation of the SCPIP plus the step one plus step two. Now SCPIP is ready to use as a whole pipeline. So the third step is just to uh, ex execute the pipeline. Now we have defined everything. The pipeline is defined uh, within R. Uh, it will be internally passed as CWL scripts, but you don't need to know anything about CWL. And uh, so here the CWL equals to SC pipe. We need to define an output directory to save all the output uh, that we have defined over here and the input list put the uh, the values for the input parameters and uh, for these two. So uh, in the lab demo, a little bit later, I will show you how to use the uh, pipeline combining the star solo and droplet utils in more details. So the other package is called RCWL pipeline. It is a collection of uh, RCWL tools and pipelines. So it is currently include 104 um, pre-built and pre-tested tools and 26 pipelines. It covers a wide range of data analysis, including DNA-seq and RNA-seq. We have some unique pipelines developed, such as the new antigen prediction. So this is the whole pipeline for the new antigen prediction. It involves many uh, tools. Uh, such as the DNA sequencing alignment, the RNA read quantification, uh, the somatic and germline variant calling, and uh, the annotation phasing steps, HLA tapping steps, and new antigen prediction. So with the whole pipeline defined, you just uh, um, assign values for the input files and you can get uh, a final result as ranked new antigens. So I want to uh, highlight that the project of RCW pipelines are now focused towards a community-driven platform for open source, open development, and open review of best practice DWL bioinformatics pipelines. And we look forward to collaborations and contributions from the community to add a more specialized set of tools and pipelines to the collection. And can just make your pull request over here and uh, to use this existing like more than 100 pre-built tools and pipelines, uh, we have provided three core functions to help you with that. So these core functions will help you to sync the current RCWL recipes, search for interested tools pipelines using keywords and source the uh, RCWL tools pipelines of interest into your R session ready for use. Have you introduced three core functions in our lab demo also? So I have just, uh, let's go back to the uh, cloud instance. I have just uh, opened like 10 minutes ago. Here in the files, we can click on the vignettes 
and there are two we'll be focusing on the first one, BELC 2020 RWL dot RMD. We have another one for developers if you are interested. And uh, let's get started with the lab demo. First, I want to clarify that we don't require any prior experience with CWL, but we do um, assume you have some basic knowledge of using RM Bioconductor packages and some basic familiarity with running command line tools. So in the lab demo, I will just uh, show you how to use the core functions to update search and load tools and pipelines. And I'll show you how to use the single cell indexing tool called star index and how to use the single cell alignment tool called star solo and how to use the single cell filtering tool um, generated from our function and our package called droplet utils and uh, i'll show you how to combine these uh, steps into a single pipeline uh, single cell pre-processing pipeline it is called star solo droplet utils this Tools and pipelines are all available in the package of RCWL pipelines. Uh, so you should be able to run this conveniently. So I just give you a brief introduction using the slides. Here I will show you uh, the data source for our lab demo. Uh, today we have. Um, we, we will be using the single cell data resource uh, from the 1K PBMC from 10X Genomics. Originally, it consists of a thousand PBMC cells extracted from a healthy donor, where PBMCs are primary cells with relatively small amount of RNA. For this tutorial, we use the data set that has been subsampled from the source file to contain only 15 cells instead of 1,000. So we have also further curated the data to only include the reads on chromosome 21 so that the real execution of our CWL tools and pipelines in R can be done just within two minutes for each step. So we can find those, uh, the data in the inst folder over here and the test data folder. So all the files are available over here. As we can see, we have four FASTA files. Um, from two lanes. The first two are from lane one and the second two are from lane two. And R1 first, R1 represents uh, the first Q file for the cell barcode. And R2 represents the first Q file for the cDNA. Uh, so now we have four first Q files from two lanes for the cell barcode and cDNA. For the mapping, we need a white list of known cell barcodes. Here we used uh, 15 barcodes that we have already subsided. And uh, the name is the subsite 15 demo barcode. And um, also in this tutorial, we'll be using the HG19 version of the human genome. And we we'll therefore also need to use the HG19 GTF file to annotate our reads. So these two files will be uh, called Within our lab demos, they are all available here, and uh, you can you should be just run the code um, easily. Uh, just a little bit more explanation. The in this tutorial, we are basically trying to reproduce the Galaxy pipeline for the single cell RNA seq data preprocessing. So we'll be using the Star Solo to produce um, a count matrix from FASTQ and the droplet utils. Uh, to produce a high quality count matrix with feature and cell annotation files uh, saved in our object of single cell experiment. Before these two steps, we have also added a one time indexing step in our workshop. For the usage of existing tools pipelines uh, that are available in the RWL pipelines package, three major steps are needed. First is to search and load the tool or pipeline. Second is just as simple as assign values for each of the defined parameters as you do uh, a lot in R. And the third step is just execute the tool and pipeline. All steps are done out pro programmatically in R and then we can get the results ready in the user specified directory. 
So first step is to load the tools. Now I'm going to introduce uh, you the three core functions, CWL update, CWL search, and CWL load for updating, searching, and loading the needed tools or pipelines. Let me just run this library and the next, because uh, the CWL update is going to take about uh, one or two minutes the first time you run it. And the CW update is the function to uh, sync all the available tools and pipelines in your local, um, your, in your local cache. And uh, if it's the first time you are using our CW pipelines, you need to do this. Uh, but if you have been repeatedly using just one tool or pipeline inside this package, you don't need to run this every time. But if you want to, uh, if you are an established user, but you want to explore some newly added tools or pipelines, you want to run this um, command so it will sync any newly added files. So it will take like about another minute. If you have any questions, please just post on the chat board. Okay, so the ATLS is generated. Let's take a look. So it is a um, BLC file cache table. It is a BLC file cache object, ATLS. And uh, we can use some functions like BFC info to take a look at uh, the, in, the information included in this object. So you can see the RID. So it is like a local cache ID and our name, the name of the tools and pipelines we have been included. So PL stands for the pipelines. And if you go to the next page, the TL represents tool, tools. So and, um, if we run this line, we can see, make a table of the tab column. We have 104 tools and 26 pipelines. So, uh, the, so now we have all of the up, all of the most uh, updated tools and pipelines locally cached. So, uh, if you don't know what which tool specifically to use, we can use the some keywords to search. So, the CWL search supports like multiple keywords searching in the um, in your cache folder. So uh, it basically internally search the keywords against the BASI file cache table in the columns of our name, our path, F path, command, and containers. Here we use the two keywords, star and index, to do the searching. And we take a look at uh, the return value. So it returned two records. One is the pipeline for ISIC SF, and the other is the tool called star index. So the second is the one we are interested in now. Uh, we want to load it into our R session to use it. So the last call function is CWL load, which source the RCWL script for the interested tools or pipelines into the R working environment. So you can use the CWL load using the R name. So uh, the log shows the star index is already loaded and it is, um, it is, uh, as for a class and uh, the show method shows several sections. First, we look at the first session and shows the class, the CWL prem, the CWL cl class is command line tool and CWL version and base command. And the second section is the requirements because the star index, you are using it in, within R, you don't necessarily need to install the star command line tool in your local computer because the CWI has already provided this Docker image for the star um, command line tool that you can be just readily to be used within R. You don't need to pre-install anything. So this is the Docker requirements because we are using some um, tools that you may not have on your local computer. And there's a section for arguments and uh, this is the most important section for users. 
uh, is the input section. Uh, when you are using the star index tool as command line tool, uh, therefore, there'll be four arguments you need to put values in. So for the argument of genome directory, there is a default value called star index. So we don't, don't need to worry about this. It has a default value. And the run thread, the number of thread you want to put in. So the default is four. You don't need to worry about this. So for the other two arguments, genome FASTA files and the uh, GTF file, we need to assign values to these two parameters in order to run this um, script. And there's a section called output. You don't really need to know. Uh, so we'll be focusing on the input section for the S4 uh, class. And for each of the section, we have defined some convenient utility functions to return each of the section. For example, we can use the CWL version function here. So it returns the CWL version v1.1. Oh, and the requirements to re re return the requirements, like uh, the class of the requirements is Docker requirement and the Docker pool image address uh, here from back containers. And the input, this is the most important uh, one you are uh, gonna be used very frequently and output. Okay, let's assign values for these parameters. Now we need to assign values for these two parameters, right? We already have the files over here and we return the, we look at the input file again, see which parameter needs our assignment. So we assign those values. Like the first one is star index dollar genome FASTA files. So it will read the chromosome 21. Now I have an error. Oh. I didn't, maybe I didn't. I think I forgot to run just one part of the code. Sorry about that. I need to run this, define the path and out path. So an out path will be generated over here. So this out directory is uh, going to be the output directory that we'll be using um, to save out outputs. Let's assign values again for the two parameters. And now we take another look at the star index object. So for the input section, we don't only we are not only having the default values for the gene for these two arguments, we also have the assigned values for these two uh, arguments. And uh, it has the configuration, it has the values, so it's ready to be executed. Uh, I'll just execute this for now because it's going to take one minute and I'll explain it. And uh, so for run the CWL, run CWL function, we need to define the R object, the R tool, which is named as star index. The output directory using the out path and uh, a new folder name. So the Docker equals to false here because we're running everything in the cloud instance we have actually pre-installed all the required command line tools such as the star. Uh, so it, we don't really using the Docker images that are included over here because we have it locally installed. But if you are using the Docker instance, as I have just showed you, if you have used Docker pool, you need to change this Docker into singularity. So it takes three values for now. If uh, most, most commonly, I assume if you work on high performance computing and you have a runtime is Docker and you will pull Docker images for the required command line tools. So this is the default value. If you are uh, working on your local computer, you have all the command line tools pre-installed. You just specify Docker equals to false as I have just done here. Um, but if you are working on the HPC, but your runtime, it's singularity, you can just specify Docker equals to singularity here and uh, you should be off site. We're also working to accommodate for uh, other runtimes such as UDocker. If you don't have credentials for using Docker or singularity, you can use UDocker. And uh, they are just uh, still within development. It's not pushed to Bell Conductor yet. So this should be 
and in just like a, a couple of seconds. Let me take a look at the alt directory. So if it is successful, all the uh, files should be generated over here. It's not showing the, okay, it's now showing the log. See, uh, we have a new folder generated in our, in our out path. So um, it saves all the results over here from indexing um, our, um, our, our FastQL file from index, indexing, indexing our reference genome. And we can use the directory to show the results. So they're all available with this uh, file path. Now we have the output files in the folder under the output path. And these are ready to be passed as input files for the next tool. So the next step, we are going to do the alignment of a single cell reads using star. It can be done directly if you're using command line. So you need to call the base command star and you just, uh, with all the parameters, you need to give them a value. And some of them already have a, like default values over here, but for the, the others, you have to um, put in your file path, absolute file path over here, for example, the read files in. And now we can follow the previous example to load our RSWL version for Star Solo and uh, run it in R. You just use CWL load. And we'll take a look at the Star Solo object. So again, it is the same as for a class. The name is Star Solo, but the CWL class is command line tool. The class is CWL prime and some best command CWL. Uh, version and the requirements specify the uh, the Docker image in bell container for the command line tool called star. And the arguments with some default values are included over here. The input section, uh, which requires your assignment of values. Some of them already have a default value, for example, the solo type, solo UMI length, run thread, and you need to put uh, values for the first four uh, parameters. And we are now looking at the output now. So let's assign values for the four parameters. And let's take another look at the star solo now to make sure that all the required parameters are having an absolute uh, file path, absolute value, values for the specific parameters. CB, this is not a sign. Genome directory is not a sign. Okay, let me do this again. Okay, now we have the read files in for CDA, read files in for cell barcode and the genome directory, which is reading the star index, uh, the previous, uh, the output from the previous tool. And so this is connecting the two tools. And now it's ready to run. It will take about two minutes. Uh, again, we call the function run CWL. Uh, the name of the R S4 class here, output directory, we are still using the output path with a new directory name called star solo output. So if you click on this, it should appear once the files are generated should be here, here's. Also, we are using docker equals to false. Remember to uh, use docker equals to singularity if you are running the docker um, images that is pulled from the, the website over here. If you're using the docker, you need to change the value of docker argument into singularity. And 
Let's just wait for one minute. So all the parameters, I think all the parameters are man mandatory, but some are already having some default values. So you don't need to worry about it. But for the, the others, you have to put in values. You have to have values for all the parameters here. So if you're defining your own tool, you can choose which one to um, ask the users to specify as like um, mandatory parameters. So it's not showing a log in the real time. Feels like more than two minutes. So we can also choose to use the, the other function called run CWL batch if you have like a very big data set so that you can just uh, assign them onto different um, batches and run them, run the batches in parallel using, it is internally supported by the BLC parallel. So any uh, job submitting systems would be uh, supported as such as the SLARM, SGE. Mm. So we are using the run CWL just uh, for the demo. So we are expecting people to use the run CWL batch more. So, okay. I think it's running in the size. Now we have the new folder generated and it has all the output saved out, including the SNAP file and the folder called solo.out. Okay, let's go to the next step. So uh, I hope you are familiar with how to use the CWL load to load the, uh, to load the pre-built tools and pipelines and also you know how to assign values just using your very familiar R um, grammar to assign values uh, to the parameters. And uh, now we are going to show you how to integrate an R package and R functions uh, into a CWL pipeline or convert it into a CWL um, tool. So to get a high quality count matrix, we must apply the droplet utils tool, which will produce a filtered data set that is more representative of the cell ranger pipeline. Uh, since CWI itself doesn't support the integration of our packages or our functions, this will be the unique feature for RCWL where we can easily connect the upstream data, pre pre data pre-processing steps um, based on the command line tools and the downstream data analysis steps that are heavily done in our Bell connector. So the idea is to put anything you want to do into an R function with specific arguments for input and output files, then it's ready to be wrapped as an RCWL tool for execution. So here I'm showing you 
uh, example of how to wrap the droplet U2s function as an RCWL tool. So first, we need to write a function called droplet utils. And the next step is to wrap this droplet utils R function as an R, as an R, um, RCWL tool called droplet utils function, uh, called droplet utils R object. So the base command is the R function we have defined over here with some input parameters that are passed from the arguments over here. The, Three input parameters are defined over here and two output parameters are defined, which are included in the output over here. So basically we did three things in defining the function. First is to call the read to next counts, which just convert the uh, count matrix uh, into a single cell experiment, our object. The second thing is to call the barcode ranks function from droplet utils R package and do the plot of this barcode ranks over here. And also the third thing is to like order this uh, bark of ranks and uh, do the plot. So this will generate a diagnostic uh, figure called M for empty droplets. So these two uh, figures will be included into one uh, PDF file called diagnostics.pdf. And uh, we do the filtering based on the diagnostics. Uh, we do the filtering and uh, remove those empty droplets and uh, return the filtered single cell experiment as an R data. So we have two output files. One is the PDF file and one is the RDS file and three input parameters over here. So now we have this function defined. We use the CWL prime. Uh, to define the base command is the R function and input and output are defined over here. So let's go back to our, okay, I'm over here. So similarly, we just CWL load and take a look at the inputs. So there are three inputs that are required. Two are having a default value, but we don't have like so many samples uh, that uh, degree of freedom, we cannot use 20, otherwise it will give you warning, but it was okay. So just assign values. Here we are reading the solo.out folder from uh, the previous step of start solo as input for directory name. And then we assign values for the other two arguments. And now we run the CWL uh, for droplet utils with the folder name over here. Let's go back. So this step is really quick. Now we have three output files. See the, the first uh, step from star index and the second step from star solo and the third step for, for running the droplet utils. Now we have two output files generated. First is the diagnostic figures for the cell barcode and the empty droplets. And then we have a RDS file for singing the filtered single cell experiment object. We can take a look. So it's loading the single cell experiment package. Okay, so it is a single cell experiment object. Now we can see only contains 10 cells because it had filtered out five cells as empty cells uh, from the diagnostic figures. And uh, okay, I hope uh, you know how to use this existing predefined tools. Uh, either they're from command line tools or they're from an R function. So uh, alternatively and more easily, we can connect these tools and make a pipeline so that you don't need to run the steps like run the uh, tools step, uh, step by step. So the pipeline is already available in the RCWL pipelines called a PL star solo job utils. 
It has integrated the Star Solo and Joplin tutus for a streamlined pre-processing analysis within R. And these pipelines are ready for customization for your own research. For a pipeline, we only need to assign input values for the whole pipeline, not the individual tools involved. And input and output between each steps are predefined in the pipeline to ensure a smooth pathing. So let me run this. Here it shows the plot CWL function. It shows your mermaid uh, figure here. So the squares are the input files. We need five input files. Uh, the diamonds are the tools that are involved. We need to start solo and jump into tools. And the circles are the output files from each, um, for the whole pipeline that we want to uh, extract them out. So the same file from star solo and the solo folder from star solo, the single cell experiment are data from job tutus and the diagnostic figures. So let's take a look at the input for the whole pipeline. So it looks very simple. We need five, you need to assign values for these five uh, parameters. Now let's do the assignment and take a look at this again. So all the parameters have been uh, assigned values. White list is not assigned, I think. It should be all having a value for each of the parameters. And now let's run the pipeline. So it will take about two minutes because it runs the start solo automatically and run the droplet utils automatically after start solo. You don't need to run them on step by step. Uh, the whole pipeline will take care of it for you. It will generate a file folder called SC pipeline output. It will be showing over here if uh, it runs successfully. Again, we are using Docker equals to false because we have pre-installed all the command line tools. So we are not actually using those Docker images from bio container for, uh, for the command line tools. But if you're using a Docker, uh, the Docker image uh, downloaded the pool from the website, you need to change it to the singularity. So by running the pipeline, we are only outputting four uh, as, the, the, as the figure shows. We are only globbing four outputs. So it's now the output like, okay, it's not showing because it's still running. It's not like the, all the output from a single individual um, tool. For the whole pipeline, we, we are only interested in four output files and the um, configured it, uh, we include this in the configure uh, region for this pipeline as we define them. So only for uh, files or directories will be output. So as it's running, I want to say that there are some other cool functionalities that we haven't included in this workshop. For example, the run CWL batch function is designed for execution of CWL pipelines in high performance computing with the support of different job submitting systems. And the CWL Shani opens a Shani uh, interface for you to like more conveniently to assign values for the parameters. As a summary, this workshop has introduced the usage of two packages RCWL, RCWL and RCWL pipelines in constructing and executing the CWL tools pipelines within R for the previously command line tools as well as customized R functions. So the pre-built tools and pipelines are highly modularized and uh, optimized for easy customization for your speci uh, specific data analysis needs. And uh, they're still under active developments and we are putting in more of the tools and pipelines. And we welcome any questions for the functionalities, feature requests and issue reports. And uh, 
as I have just mentioned in the slides, we are working, no, I didn't mention it, but we are, uh, for using the RSWL pipelines, we are basically asking the users to use the pre-built RSWL tools and pipelines. But if you already have some CWL pipelines from your lab or your collaborators, we are working to support that using the CWL load function. So basically, I'll show you an example. It should not be working now because it's not pushed onto the uh, bioconductor yet. But if you already have a CWL scripts from somewhere, you can just use the CWL load function with the file path of your CWL script and it will just load the CWL uh, scripts into R as an as for R object. And you can just assign values using your familiar R functions and then execute this script within R. You don't need to run it in the command line tools. And also, this is for a single CWL tool. If you have a CWL pipeline, which depends on many tools, you can also use the CWL load function. Uh, in this way, uh, specify the, the git repo and the CWL file in your repo. This is the represent the pipeline that you already have. So um, it's a work in progress and we hope to push this new feature onto the bioconductor soon. Is it still running? Okay. So now we have the whole pipeline uh, successfully run. It is called SC pipeline output. Now we can see the four things we are interested in from the whole pipeline. Uh, the same file from Star Solo, the diagnostic PDF from Droplet Utils, uh, the single cell experiment object R data, and the solo.out folder from Star Solo. Uh, so I want to uh, emphasize again that we are trying to make this project as a community effort uh, for developing and sharing of specific sets of tools and pipelines in their bioinformatics domain. So we look forward to any collaborations in developing the pipelines and please feel free to make your pull request. And uh, this uh, work is supported by the Clinic and Translational Science Award to UB from NIH. Thank you for your attention.